Welcome to Teapot Genies. Cemeteries can be an important source of information. So what we plan to do today is see just what information we can find. But first we're going to speak to Kim Farley, who runs the Catholic Cemetery Trust at Rookwood Cemetery. Rookwood Cemetery in Sydney, and we're talking to Kim Fairley about the operation here. Can you tell us a bit about Rookwood Cemetery? Well, Rookwood's a very interesting place. It was established in 1867, and it's the largest uh, cemetery, Victorian cemetery, uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, it, it's a very interesting place because it's not only a place of uh, great heritage and historical value, but of course we have uh, been in operation for such a long period of time that uh, uh, we've got a blend of the modern and uh, uh, the historical here, mm. and it's a it's a rent, it's a rich source of history, mm. not only for people who are doing genealogical inquiries, but mm -hmm. people who are interested in history generally. Kim, how can you help people that come here perhaps to trace their family tree? Well, from the outset, uh, you can pretty well tell whether the person's familiar with uh, what's required. Uh, sometimes a family will come in who would just like to visit their, their relative's grave, or alternatively, someone's clearly trying to do their family history. Uh, when they're doing their family history, it's important that the person comes to us with as much information as they can, particularly the spelling of the name, because over the years spellings change quite regularly. So the, the correct spelling of the name, uh, the Christian name if possible, uh, the date of death would also be important, so that uh, we can then look at our records to uh, help them find the, the person they're after. Often people might not know the religion of their ancestor. Well, that's right. Yeah. Uh, we're not cross-referenced, yeah. but uh, people will often say that uh, the person was buried at Rookwood mm. and, um, or the necropolis, mm. as the uh, death certificates often uh, refer to the cemetery, the necropolis. So uh, if the person's not located in, in our records, we would then say, well, perhaps you might like to try the Anglican. Or If people write in to us, uh, we quite often find that uh, uh, we might refer, that it's, that it's probably valuable to uh, refer the letter to one of the other denominations here, particularly when the person's confident that the person was buried at Rookwood. Are there any famous people buried here that come to mind? Oh, uh, just quickly, there's uh, the famous um, fellow Darcy Dugan mm -hmm. he was a uh, an infamous chap mm. and there's quite a number of uh, political identities uh, Joe Carl for example also with the growth of the internet do you think you might um, improve your service yes. you know, as time goes on yes well we're looking at our records uh, all the time and uh, uh, people who do the genealogical research are becoming more and more sophisticated mm. in themselves and uh, we can see the, the, the day one day when when we will hopefully have a, uh, a database web link mm. so that people won't have to come to the office they'll be able to do their research from home but mm. there are a lot of things which have to be ironed out before we can yes. offer that service. What kind of problems do people generally come across when they're doing their family tree from here? Well, I think sometimes uh, they really stem from the, the basics. They may not know the, the correct spelling of the family member. That's very important. Mm. And even when they do have the correct uh, spelling, it's important for them to realise that sometimes over time the spelling might change. Mm. So it's important for them to suggest to us when we're helping them that perhaps there might be another spelling. Mm. And uh, when there, there, there's slight variations, we can help them, in fact, uh, through the software we use on our database. Mm. But uh, that's, that's always a difficult one, the, uh, the spelling. And it also helps if they can narrow down the date of death. Mm. Because as you can imagine, our records go back to 1867. So uh, with mm. common names, yeah. you could have mm. literally hundreds yeah. of uh, possible uh, uh, relatives. Okay, Kim, do you, would you mind taking us inside now so we can have a look for yeah. some of our people? With pleasure. What name would you uh, like to inquire on? Uh, I'll go first. Bridget Lucy Cummings, C U M M I N G S. She died in 1899. Bridget Lucy, she was 69 when she passed away and she was married. Uh, we don't know the name of the 
the owner of the grave at the time, which is buried in uh, Mortuary 1, Section N, uh, grave number 697. Now that's interment number one. Yep. Oh, can you give me a map of that? So yes, yeah, sure. Go and find it. If yep. See. This is uh, the map of Mortuary One. Can you look up Mary Gibbs for me? She died in 1954. Okay, Mary um, was 76 when she passed away. She was married. Mm -hmm. um, she lived at 17 Morton Street, Roselle, and um, the owner of the grave at the time was. Uh, a lady by the name of Minnie Ponchard, P-O-N-C-H-A-R-D, mm -hmm. and uh, the grave is in Mortuary 2, Section 14, grave number 4255. Now, is there anybody else in there with her? Uh, Frederick A. Gibbs, uh, who died on the 5th of October 1956, is, uh, is there as well, second okay. interment. Do you look up Henry Leach, L-A-A-C-H? Okay. Yeah. Yes, he was 54 when he passed away. He was married. Um, and uh, he's buried in Mortuary 2, Section 10, 2928. There is uh, an Elizabeth Leach oh, as well. Yes. And in 2929, um, a person by the name of B. Leach purchased that grave, and it's vacant at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the book for Section 10. And we're looking for 2928 is the grave number. All of these records were uh, transferred onto the computer. But there may be something in here that we don't have. Well, that's the information I mentioned to you a few moments ago. Uh, Henry and Elizabeth. And this is the, the vacant grave, 2929. Oh, so it's just a blank space. So how, like, what happens if that person's died? Or if the, owner, if the owner dies, mm. the grave, the right to use the grave, goes to that person's estate. Oh, right. All right. Well, Great. we might um, head over Thank to you. the... Yeah. Which we one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kim. That's been Thank terrific. You. you will see that some graves have a lot of information some have a little, and sadly, some have nothing. This is Henry and Elizabeth Leach's grave. As you can see, it has a substantial headstone. Here we have Mary Gibbs. Sadly, no headstone to tell us who is here. Jacob and Della, your great great grandparents. And I just couldn't believe, after all the years of searching, there you are. When I finally found it, I decided to mark it appropriately with Jacob and jo Joanna's information and you'll see where they came from when they arrived and a little bit about each of them so that in the future anybody else after I've gone, anybody else looking for them, it will all be there. Mm -hmm. A true genealogy style. So how long style. did it take you to, to trace these oh, two? The better part of 20 oh, years. Yeah. Okay, well I hope they don't mind if we sit down and have a cup of tea right <laughs> I'm next sure to they won't. <laughs> Okay. Well, there's still a lot more to learn, but for the moment, we've all made that tangible connection with our ancestors. We'll see you next time on Teapot Genies. <laughs>